great day learners so this is part two of the lecture discussion for weed science module two or ecological and economic concepts of weeds so we're done discussing or defining the term weed also we have started discussing the importance of weeds but we just focus on its harmful effects so for its harmful effects, we have discussed the direct and indirect uses no, of this weed. So additionally, agricultural weeds can really hurt no, our crop yields or increase the cost of production. So how are these costs or how is crop yield being affected? First is that these weeds really compete directly for solar radiation, for nutrients, for moisture, and even for space. So in the picture here, in the first picture, we have seen that the weeds present in the area really consider considerably stolen you know, this important or essential inputs that are supposed to be allocated for the crop of interest. Second one is that this weed have, have an allelophatic effect. So they have this ability to release natural substances that can actually inhibit the crop growth, the development, and even the reproduction of our crop of interest. So in the middle picture, you have seen here now, this is actually a yellow net sedge. So the extracts and residues of this yellow net sedge have an allelophatic effect on corn and soybean. So if in one field we can see yellow nut sedge and then we could actually uh, that area is supposedly intended for corn and soybean but then this yellow nut sedge is actually present with so this yellow nut sedge you know, could release a biochemical substance that would actually Humper the growth and development of our soybean and corn, which is which are rather our crops of interest. And the third one is that these weeds physically hinder crop growth and development. For example, we have here the hedge bindweed, bindweed or the Calistegia sitium. This is emerging in sweet corn. It does not only compete for solar radiation, for nutrients and moisture, but it physically hinders no, normal crop development by binding the leaves together. So, mandirigma pala itong weed na ito. Okay, I said that it's stolen a considerable portion of these essential nutrients and elements and inputs. Meron pa siyang um, ability no, to have a fencing no, in terms of their leaves and more importantly this agricultural weeds can really reduce no or can actually yield to yield lead to yield losses because they serve as host to this pest or pathogen that could eventually attack our crops so i have here an example a clip no of coming from a journal article so this talks about the relationships between insect pests and weeds in this paper we could actually check on that the presence of weeds in that specific area serves as a habitat or ecological niche for the microorganisms for the pathogens the bacteria the virus no and the fungus and even for the insect pest. So, yung weeds po yung kanilang tirahan, yung weeds po ay present sa ating area. So, ano yung mayayari? Tadami yung weeds, tadami din yung mga pathogens and other insect pests. So, the more na magiging susceptible yung ating crop of interest from this attacks. So, meron pang weed na nagpag-compete for these essential inputs. Meron pang ibang peste, uri ng peste na aatahan sa kanila. So, para bagang ang dami-dami ng kalaban ng ating crops of interest. So, if this pest, other pest, other than the weed, could reproduce prolifically, what would happen? It would actually result to a great 
factor test problem in the future. It's not controlled. The second one for this slide is that it interferes with or it actually contaminates crop harvest. So we have here this giant fox tail or the setaria has not yet seriously affected the snop beans. Then the snop beans in this picture is already in flowering and stage and it's already setting pods. But the presence of this fox tail could actually interfere with either manual or mechanical harvest. Ayan. And the presence of this fox tail could actually promote fungal diseases. Why? Because it actually limits air flow no? that's happening through the bean crop. So limited yung air flow, mas gusto yun ng mga fungus. So... Pagka mag-harvest ka, mag-isip pa kag-harvest ka, dahil ka example. The last one, promoting disease by restricting air circulation around the crop. So this is in relation to the example that I've set earlier. So for this picture, the tomato crop has lost its lower leaves to fungal diseases. So the weeds growing adjacent to the crop row have likely prolonged leaf wetness rather from morning dew. So, of course, you would notice early in the morning, ma weeds man na or more crop of interest ni mga hamog. And when this morning dew or mga hamog is present, so what would happen? It's actually a more favorable environmental condition for the growth of fungus. No? On the foliage of the mito. Muna ang hitabo sa atong kamatis, na wala niyahang lower leaves tungod kay gi-attacking mo tong giunag atake sa mga fungus na eventually managan po to sila tungod kay dagan sagbot wala proper air circulation so much more for the harmful effects of weeds let's talk naman about the positive side of this weeds na what are the beneficial effects of this weeds first thing weeds provide a vegetative cover that protects the soil surface against erosive action of rain and wind. So, in our example here, we have seen no, that a lot, a, a different, uh, various kinds of weeds could actually be used as cover crop. For example, we can use the mani mani or the arachis pintoy no, as cover crop. So, why is the why is there a need for us to have cover cropping? It's because Cover cropping could actually help preserve moisture. Aside from that, it could actually prevent the occurrence of soil erosion. And the second one is that weeds play an important part in nutrient recycling. So roots of weeds stop nutrients from the lower soil. So, diba, there are actually nutrients that are actually found, no? Because there are different layers of soil. So, there are uh, nutrients that, get, that are initially found, no, on the lower soil depths. So, since weeds have the ability to access them, of course, it, the nutrients will be distributed to its other parts, such as the stem, the leaves. And when this leaves, no, would actually dry off, so, we will have the leaf litters. So, when these leaf litters are being, when this, the leaves are already shed off, they become leaf litters. And when the entire plant dies and decays, it would again go back to the soil nutrients. So, weeds actually add organic matter to the soil, both from the roots and from the above ground parts. So, we have here some pictures of leaf litters and even some weeds used for compost material compost. and then many plants that are actually designated and as weeds are used at past ah, sorry nagbubulal ako are used as pot herbs or for their medicinal purposes so the first picture is about talinum triangulare so this is used no as pot herb as it is diuretic and also helpful for the management of some gastrointestinal disorder. 
Then we also have this euphorbia herta or the tawa, -tawa. So it could actually treat no, some respiratory ailments such as cough, bronchitis, or even asthma, or even worm infestation in children. Tawa, tawa is also very effective. Even sila in pimple control or even in digestive problems and tumor. And the last picture here is your Peperomia pellucida or the sinaw, sinaw So it is said that sinaw, sinaw extract, no, sinaw, sinaw is actually a fleshy herb plant commonly found in the Philippines. So its fleshy extract is believed to treat urinary tract infection or UTI in traditional folk medicine. Oh, then weeds no, can be one of the many sources of pesticide. So, for example, this chrysanthemum, no, cinera folium, which actually provides insect, the insecticidal compound called the pyrethrum. So, this pyrethrum or pyrethrin is commonly used to control mosquitoes, fleas, flies, moths, and many other pests. Kaya nga sa ibang bahay, tinatanim itong si chrysanthemum para dili kaayo lamukon. Then we also have the chromolina or the rata, sorry, or the hagunoy. So studies have suggested that it has this antimicrobial no? and wound healing property. Also antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. It could actually heal wound. So daghan siya, no? And eventually, this hagunoy has this insecticidal properties used against the bronchisma longestima or the larvae the larval stage of the coconut leaf beetle because this chromolina sorry for the spelling it should be chromolina not corno malina it should be chromolina odorata and then another one weeds provide food and cover for animal so wildlife generally depends on weeds for survival as food and shelter. So we have this Bacaria metica or the Paragras. We also have Pinicitum purpurium or Nipirgas. Diba? These are actually eaten by our livestock. So try to imagine if we're going to eliminate the population of Bacaria metica and Pinicitum purpurium, what would happen? The population of our livestock industry, no, our livestock animals, would also be clean. Then we also have this Talinum triangulare. This Talinum triangulare is actually eaten by human beings, no? Pwede siya isal. Ayan. And then another thing, weeds serve as an important source of genetic materials for crop improvement. So I am, no, a product of the few first batches, no, 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 not the few first batches, few for, uh, the first five siguro after the introduction of plant breeding specialization. So in plant breeding, we are really into crop diversification, no? Widening genetic diversity because we are tapping potential sources of genes for resistance, for biofortification of our crops of interest. So what could happen here? na ada yung mga weeds na na sila ang source of genes for breeding for some specific or targeted characteristics such as resistance to pests and diseases. So, these are made possible by genetic materials provided by the wild species of our crop of interest. So, do you know that a Japonica variety of rice was engineered no, with three genes? So, the three genes necessary for the rice grain to produce and store beta carotene to create this golden, golden rice. So, this included two genes from the daffodils, and daffodils are actually considered, these are flowers, but in some areas now of the world, daffodils are considered as weed. So, yun, dalawang bak, rather, dalawang genes po from the daffodil, tas isang gene from a bacteria. So now, these weeds are actually sources of potential genes. And then, we have this Rhizae rocky pugon. 
So, Rise of Repugan is a wild no? relative of our Rise of Sativa. So, this Rise of Repugan has been characterized no? and it is said to have derived resistance to Tongro disease in Rise. So, it's actually as possible, it's an important source of genes against Tongro virus. Ito lang may tabuan ng Rise Mamu na Tongro. Because this rice tongue disease is caused by a combination diba, of viruses, if you could still remember in your pathology, and the viruses can be transmitted by grasshoppers, right? No, or leaf, sorry, of leaf hoppers. Not very specific, though. of leaf hoppers. So, what's the name of carrier sa rice tongue virus? Kay leaf hoppers. So, it's affected the rice. And then, it's yellow at the rice. It's yellow at the rice. orange ang color. Ma-reduce ang tiller no number di magsigig panaha. Tapos gamay ra ang panicle sa gamay ra atong maani sa ato ang rice. So asa kut asa gikan ang gene nga possible source man for the resistance aning rice tongue virus from the Oryza ropipogon which is actually considered as a And then weeds also serve as host no of beneficial insects and at the same time they provide nectar for the bees. So our beneficial organisms or beneficial insects are happy with the presence of these weeds, of these beneficial weeds as well. Because they would not cease to exist. Tungod kay na adari ang mga naapay mga weeds na pwede nila. And then many weeds help to beautify the landscape. No. So, Good ground cover such as our Bermuda grass or Sinodon Dactylon beautifies our golf courses or the Paspalum Conjugatum actually beautifies our home for landscaping purposes. And then many weeds are used as raw materials for handicrafts. So I've given it as an example earlier the water hyacinth or the Icornia crassipes na nakakuan siya sa Usaka Lake, no? But then, why not try to make use of this water water hyacinth, no? Para magbuhat tao eco-friendly handicrafts. You can earn money out of the weeds. And then, um, in many wedding occasions, no? Flower, uh, the inflorescence of weeds are actually used as decorations. So there are a lot of beneficial effects that we can actually have no or acquire from the weeds to protect the soil from erosion replenish organic matter they they, they can be this is a wrap up they can be used as a feed as a food they restore the soil the life of the soil they actually absorb or even conserve and recycle mga soluble nutrients na unta malich away na pero na pa may weeds so sila ang nakaabsorb Pwede po sila mag-absorb ang kayong carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. They could actually restore diversity kaya pwede sila puyan sa mga beneficial microorganisms or insects. And they provide habitat for insect and animals. So there are a lot no, of beneficial effects of this. Though, there has, been, um, there has been a record of its harmful effect. But we as human beings, because it farming needs human intervention, we just make sure that the harmful effect of weeds would not exceed its benefit effect. So let's proceed to the second topic called the weed crop competition. When we talk about weed crop competition, rather this is the third topic na pala. So this indicates the competition between the crops of interest and weeds in a natural ecosystem in response to some resources. No. For their existence and superiority. So, what are these resources? So, we have space, solar radiation, water, nutrients, right? And by far and large, yung totoo po, yung ating mga weeds appear to be much more, much more pagkid, adapted to agroecosystem compared to our modern day crops. No? Mas makasugakod sila. Okay, mas anad man sila 
ever since they arise here on earth or they sprout here on earth, anad itong mga sagbot na maningkamot without even, no? Um, without even really focusing on them. Na dili na mag-focus ang tao sa ilaha. Dili tagaan silang mga pinanganan. Kabalo silang minitag pa maagi as compared to our crops of interest. So, we have the ag- above ground competition and the below ground competition. So, when we talk about above ground, katong makita na to above the ground, moisture, solar radiation, nutrient. Below the ground, it could be they compete because of allelopathy or allelopathic effects. It's because they have this ability to release biochemicals that could actually inhibit, could actually hinder the growth, the development and reproduction of organisms. And then we also have the critical threshold level. So the critical period of competition or the CPC no, is the duration or length of time within the life cycle of the crop when that specific crop is most sensitive to competition. So the critical period of weed control is said to be the period no, in which weed control is necessary to actually avoid significant yield uses. So different crops no, are actually susceptible to interference from weeds at different times. Pero ito, nice stage siya itong kinabuhi tao. Nga mun, muna siya, itong bata-bata, muna siya nga age ang pinakasusceptible na ito sa sipon. Muna siya ang age na ito ang pinakasusceptible na ito nga magka-crush. Muna siya ang age na ito ang pinakasusceptible na ito nga um, dali na ito mapangus o mapandol o masamad na po inana ang no ang ato ang mga crop it's called the CPC the critical period of competition muna siya ang period or duration sa entire kinabuhi sa atong crops of interest na dito ang pinaka sensitive siya sa competition competition in terms of what above ground and below ground competition for example sa canola no canola is actually no susceptible no mga four leaf stage Pag upat pa yung dahon, may 17 to 38 days pa after crop emergence, ang may tabo, grabe na siya ka. Prone, no, sa competition. Pwede siya pildihon. ba Kung naatay gusto targeton, atong gusto pa, gusto mahibawan is, kano sa siya pinakasusceptible. So, P varied between sites. But, of course, naglalahi siya sa matag lugar, sa matag environmental condition. But, no, it began as early as two weeks after emergence. Po. So, for a more competitive crop naman, such as our corn, the critical period depends on nitrogen availability. But, so, kung depende kung daghan or gamay si nitrogen na fertilizer or input, or even the nitro, nat- naturally or occurring nit- nitrogen in that we can find in the air. But the critical period becoming shorter with increased fertilizer rate. So, so it's true for all crops no, that it usually falls during the first 30% or one-third to 50% of the crop's life cycle. So, muna ato ang dapat i-consider na dapat di ay tanaw na to kung 30 to 50 percent na first dapat di ay ato asa siyang i assess kung unsay pinakasaktabal then we also have this term the critical threshold level so sige na mukadung ani sa ako as it's actually the weed density or population beyond which significant yield loses no ang ma-inclure sa atong crop of interest. So, other term for this is that it's the period in which no, the weed population or density is ab- above no, it's sig- above which, sig- which is actually significant yield doses will be observed. And po, may ginabalintuwang no, Christeria. It's the period in which weed control is necessary para walay ma loss nga so, dapat may ideally mula pa sa critical threshold level. So, there are things that we need to consider, no? 
Now, when is the best time to control the weeds? So, with emergence, its timing, no weed densities, and competitive ability of weeds compared to our crops and environmental factors, these are the things to consider. No, that uh, the things that we need to answer in order for us to come up with the solution on kanu sa gilita dapat mag-apply o control measures sa ato ang weed population. Because thereby, kung kabalita ano yung mga butang ha, if we're going to use herbicide, no, then it would allow the use of reduced herbicide. It's easier for our farmers to actually push the field. So, I wanted you to study and read, no, these different recommendations. These are easily, I know, this can be easily comprehended. Control the weeds during the critical period for weed control, no? Para makuha na ito ang best results. Then, weed control operations outside the uh, critical threshold level or critical period, maybe too early or too late, will have little, no? success rate to our entire um, weed control efforts. Ayan. So, we need to be very mindful para basi dyan, instead of one, maka-apply nyo yung twice, no? Sa ato ang herbicide. So, sayang lang atong effort o ato ani. And then, weed compete successfully with our crop plants by being more aggressive in terms of its breath habit and yes to other factors. Because remember, no? Both the weeds and the crops are plants. So they have basically the same requirements for normal growth and development. Since they have the same requirement, what do they do? No? They compete for adequate supply of those same nutrients, same moisture, no? Of oxygen, of energy, so, when two or more plants are growing together in close proximity, such as our weeds and our crops of interest, aside from they would compete for this above ground, their roots might become intermingled, might intermingle, no? From rebranching or mag penetrate pagid sila, no? Sa soil. And pwede pwede ilang canopies mag overshadow. With taller crops or taller weeds, no? Katong denser canopies providing the most shade. So, in, if that would happen, no? In such plant community, there would really competition that would exist. And whoever it is that wins, then they will become the healthier one. Either the crops of interest. So, in terms of yield loses due to weeds, let's try to see some examples of actual field scenario. So this is, I've got this on and off in a book. So the competitive effect of giant foxtail on yields of corn and soybean following season-long competition. So this study handed me to mga researcher for the entire cropping season. And they notice, we have here the first column, the number of foxtail plants per foot of row. So if it's wheat free, there's no reduction in corn and reduction of yield in corn and sweet they're not sweet corn, soybean. But as the number of foxtail plants increases, the yield loses also increases no? for both the corn and the soybean. Definitely, they have direct relationship. The more abundant the weeds is, the greater the reduction it would cause to the crop. Any other kind of crop. Or crop. Another one, the same trend is happening on the effect of pigweed or amaranthus no? on yields of soybean. So if the area is weed free, the yield is high. But the population of pigweed is zero. But if there is one no pigweed plant per eight feet of row, so in you would notice there is a decline no, in the yield of the soybean. And the dry weight of pigweed. Kanya na may pigweed. So, naapoy pigweed na dry weight nga itong pwede mo masyag with the kukul. So, again, so the greater the number no, of um, pigweeds in pigweed in the area, mas dako po siya o 
uh, damage nga maku ma malus ang ato ang mga um, mas dag mas dako po do guild duces na ma-incur sa field so mubaba ang actual yield so the greater the number of the weeds the bigger the yield duces thereby decreasing the actual yield of the crops of interest so another question that we need to answer is this when do weeds become a problem as discussed above no weeds are a normal part of most agro ecosystem and they would always occur an area whether the area is grown organically or synthetically or any other farming method is approach is practiced na agni weeds na mutubo. Mind you, if you encounter a truly weed-free area, you will be very likely to be looking at a dead soil. Kaya nung mas kinsagbot, wala namin itubo. It means, wala na good kayo mapala din ha. Kaliba ang weeds na hinang lang sila nutrient, some light and the others. So kung ganang area, wala kayo sagbot na itubo din ha, then that is actually a dead soil. Yun po. Maskin pag may organic agriculture, weed problems are not innovate, in are not inevitable, no? Present lang gihapon sila. Any other kind of farming. So, weed management strategies that are based on an understanding of ecological and eco of the ecology rather of agricultural weeds, no? Particularly katong mga major weed species na present sa farm. So, kung nakasabot na natin for understanding of the ecological concept of weeds, it's easier for us to control the weeds and to have best results in terms of our yield and our quality. And it actually reduces the need for cultivation or the use of herbicide. Because these costly weed problems develop only kung naan yung tuluka condition. It's almost similar with the disease triangle, ano, a large weed seed bank including seeds of vegetative propagules such as pollens and rhizomes na nasa yuta a susceptible crop no katong unsa man tong susceptible crop so let's try to to take a look of the critical period no of that specific crop unsa katong kung gihon earlier the first one third to half no of the life cycle of the crop muna siya ang pinaka susceptible sa pag-atake sa mga sagot and the favorable environment for the occurrence of the Weeds. So when the weed seed bank is sufficient, when the environment is favorable for the growth of the weeds and the crop is susceptible, then weeds would become a problem. Remember, our goal in weed integrated weed management is to make the environment favorable to the crop of interest and unfavorable to our weeds. That's our target. How about the reflections on the war of field? Weeds rather not fields. So the fact that these weeds cause farmers, di ba, akong ginabalik-balik always. Weeds cause farmers more, no, as compared to any other major pest category, mas problemado itong mga mag-uuma, aning mga weeds. Therefore, na-inculcate na gid na sa mind sa itong farmer, ang war mentality, no, against the weeds. Given that the annual crop production always really gives rise to weed response, na nagita yung weed response area. Kung na itong crops of interest, nakapagid na yung weeds na present din ha. No? That's very true. So, ang atong farmer, na na silang utok na, kaaway din niya ang mga sagbot. Okay, yung mga sagbot, they are the costliest agricultural pests. And this war, since we could not really totally eradicate or exterminate the weed, is considered a war without end. Right? So, it condemns the grower to war without end, or it condemns the farmer to war without end in his or her field. So, what must our farmer do? Hindi man good natin yung ma-exterminate. Our farmers, our growers, need to dance with nature. No? So, how do we do this? So, magsayo-sayo, lugar si farmer with nature, kaya yung mga sagot, in which the farmer works with natural processes. So, di rin na din musulod si IPM or si integrated with management. To develop better strategies to fulfill, no, 
the ecological functions of this pioneer vegetation. Kasi yung to lang seaweeds mga din ang nagpioneer sila ang nakaon. Okay? So we need our farmer needs to needs to dance with nature by creating or developing better strategies no, that would actually help in controlling this population. So, bisan pag mag-declare si farmer of all-out war, no, using all the defenses, chemicals, 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 again, maybe for the meantime, for a short period, maayo yung harvest, wala ka ayo yung weeds, pero what would happen? Huh? It would actually not destroy valuable no agricultural enemies of insect pests. Therefore, eventually, it would only increase the production cost you know, for insect pest control or for other pests that are actually present in the so that ends no module two of CPR two forty two. I hope you've learned something and you've got to have your takeaway no mga key points that you need to remember. Signing off. Thank you so much. This is Miss Lovely Grace P. Tabenta Clark.